Hi, this is Bill Gesswich. Today I want to talk to you about architecting a Blazor application. This will be a conceptual video, and in future videos we'll be diving into the code. The agenda for today will be looking at the current architecture of the sample application that we've been working on, the Blazor app from scratch. Then we want to talk about architecture in general and some of the things that to consider and specifically talk about a proposed architecture for the Blazor app from scratch application and why that may be good. And then we'll talk about the project structure needed in order to support that and some of the things that you want to make sure that you consider along the way. So the current architecture for the Blazor app from scratch application consists of there's a Blazor server HTML markup page. We use Razor components to communicate via DTO up to a service and back. It's a pretty straightforward architecture. It works really well for a small application like what we have right now. But there might be some things that we want to consider going forward. Things like how do we distribute work? How do we reuse pieces of this in an effective way? Plus, right now, all of this resides on the server, but as we know, Blazor WebAssembly will run on the client and how do we minimize the work needed to migrate to Blazor WebAssembly. Now one thing I do want to note before we get too far into this is Blazor WebAssembly is currently in preview. I'll show you some things but obviously that they all could be subject to change. How do we want to go from the current architecture to a future architecture and what are the things to consider? Well, this is the picture that I like to strive for whenever, whenever I do an application like this. And here's a couple of things to think about. We still have the Blazor server application in the lower right. We still have the same Razor components. But those Razor components are going to be talking to a client service. And that's what we're going to call it initially. It'll still run on the server initially, but we will create it now. That client service will communicate to an API via DTO, just like we were doing before. And then the API will use the server service that we had set up to get the data and deliver it back. Now, why, do, why would we even consider that? Well, first is this does separate out the work between the client and the server. You may have people that work on the front end and the back end, and, and this will be able to separate out the work a little bit better. And also, as we go down to WebAssembly, once we get to WebAssembly, and again, my little caveat there about WebAssembly still being in preview, I'll show you how to do it today, but some of this could change. But when you, when you migrate to Blazor WebAssembly, none of the components really need to change. You have to make a couple of changes to have it run on the client versus the server. But essentially, all the rest of the application just works as is. So that's one reason. The other reason is you may have other clients that want to use the server side of things. For example, a Xamarin application. Well, the Xamarin application, instead of using components in HTML, you use uh, C Sharp, but then they can rely on the same client service to get that same information back down. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time showing you Xamarin. I just want to show you that creating the client service that we do today will be able to be used for Xamarin. But I do think it's very important to think about the architecture and if it's going to be a long-lasting architecture that's going to need to support multiple clients, you want to think about how do you architect it now at the beginning versus once you get into the project. So how are we going to look to organize our solutions in order to support this? Well, and this will be where, where we uh, migrate to. The Blazor app from scratch project will migrate to having an API controller in it, and it will still have the Razor components in it initially anyway as we stay on the Blazor server side of things. We'll add a project for the server service that we've been using, and we'll make sure that we keep that at the .NET standard 2.0 type library so that we can utilize it with Xamarin. And we'll also add a Blazor app from scratch DTO project 
and make that a .NET Standard 2.0 library as well, and that'll contain the DTO definitions. And finally, we'll add a Blazor app from scratch client that will also be a .NET Standard 2.0 library, and that'll have the client service associated with it. So what will be happening is the Razor components that exist uh, on the server side right now will call that client, and the client will call the API. That'll set everything up so that we can now, when Blazor WebAssembly comes along, we do the following. We get rid of the Razor components that reside on the server. We move them into a separate project, which we'll call Blazor App from Scratch. Wasm. That'll also be a .NET standard 2.0 library. It's just the way it is. And we'll make the Razor components Blazor WebAssembly. Now, truthfully, there isn't really much you need to do to the Razor components when you do that. You do need to make a few changes in the definition of the project on the .NET core side to tell it to go to a Wasm application. Instead, we are gonna, going to show you how to do that. What's interesting here is you may look and you may say, well, why is a DTO a separate project? Why don't you put it into the server uh, BL or the client BL? So if you do that, a couple of things to consider. First, if you put the DTO in the server BL, then the client, the Blazor app from scratch project, will need to reference the server BL in order to get to the DTO. And if you put the DTO in the client, then the server side will need to reference the client, which we don't want to have any additional references if we don't need them. So doing it this way, the Blazor app from scratch server references the server BL and the DTO, and the WASM references the client BL and the DTO. And there isn't any extraneous code needed. In addition, you'll see when we get to the Xamarin piece, we'll be able to reference just the client BL and the DTO there as well. Now this will be all part of one solution, separate projects, and the .NET Core server will be tightly coupled to the Blazor WASM pages. There is a separate way to do it where you actually have just the server sitting somewhere and you have the pages sitting somewhere else. And we'll also take you through doing that um, and separating out the WASM into a separate solution and calling .NET Core, which will be at that point just a server that serves up an API. So we'll take you through that as well. And then finally, we want to take a look at Xamarin, a Xamarin solution, and I won't be, again, spending a lot of time here, but we will uh, show you a Xamarin solution that has the references to the Blazor app from scratch DTO and the Blazor app from scratch client BL, and show you how it can utilize that data as well. And then for future videos, just to take you through and know what we're going to be doing, we'll have Pre-architecture, we made a couple of changes to the base application. Uh, that'll be in part one. I want to talk you through just the changes I made. And since that'll be fairly quick, we'll be able to talk about separating out the Blazor server application into the uh, server services as well as the DTO. Then we'll add in, in part two, we'll add in the client service so and the API. Then in part three, we'll add in the WebAssembly that will be part of that overall solution. In part four, we'll add in WebAssembly standalone and separate out the server and the client. And then in part five, I'll show you how to utilize the different pieces in a Xamarin solution. So that's what we've got in store coming up. That's it for today. If you have any questions or would like to see anything, please do not hesitate to contact me. And as always, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.